Prelude was a piece from the Corelli Christmas Concerto, performed brilliantly by the White Spruce Chamber Players. Tonight, as a huge night of celebration for us as a church and as Christians throughout the world, as we celebrate the birth of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I am, as I know we all are, sad that we cannot celebrate physically together, so so we're just going to have to do it in a unique way, since this has been such a unique year. One thing that won't change is that this will be a service of music, a, a long-held tradition in the Christian church. We will hear the story of Christ, just as the shepherds did, when the angels sang glory to God in the highest. Other things that won't change, communion. So if you didn't pick up the communion elements with your meal tonight at the church, go now and get some juice or wine and bread or crackers. And, and, and then, of course, we will sing uh, Silent Night as our closing hymn. And we will do that by candlelight. So make sure you have a candle and a lighter. It is fitting that we close uh, with Silent Night this year since this uh, Advent, the hymn Silent Night, has provided our th Advent theme. The hymn was uh, written by Joseph Moore. Joseph had kind of a spotty reputation because he was one of three illegitimate sons. His father, Franz, was a mercenary soldier who abandoned his family. And to make matters worse, Joseph's godfather, he was the town executioner. The Catholic Cathedral took Joseph in as a, fo as a foster child, and, and this had a big impact on him since he eventually decided to pursue the priesthood. So on Christmas Eve in 1818, he was a priest, and he met with his friend Franz Gruber, who was a local school teacher and the organist at his church. Joseph had a poem that he wanted Franz to put to music, for that night's Midnight Mass. Can you believe they procrastinated even back then? Gruber composed the melody in, in just a couple of hours. And that night, Gruber led the congregation in the very first scene of Silent Night. Interesting to note that it was accompanied by not an organ, but by the guitar. Joseph Moore's guitar. Joseph Moore was a generous man who donated almost all he had to charity. He created a fund to allow children from poor people uh, and poor families to attend school and, and set up a system for the care of the elderly. When he died at the much too early age of 55 from a respiratory disease, all he had at the time of death was his guitar. And that he willed to Franz Gruber.
on Christmas Eve, we find ourselves just drawn here, drawn to the sanctuary. Even during a pandemic, when we can't physically be here, why do we feel such a pull to come to this church, to the sanctuary? Because of Emmanuel. Emmanuel, which means God with us. Emmanuel is coming.
Merry Christmas. I want to tell you what the Bible said. They said, and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths and she laid him in a manger because there was no room for them at the inn. It's finally here. We've planned, we've baked, we've shopped, we've wrapped gifts, we've waited and waited in anticipation, and Christmas is finally here. What's your favorite part of Christmas? Do you like the lights? Do you like the decorating your house? Do you like making cookies? Do you like sharing your things? Do you like wrapping gifts? Do you like giving gifts or getting gifts? What's your favorite part of Christmas? Let's see, and what else is there about Christmas that I just talked about? Oh yeah, it's a birthday. It's Jesus' birthday. And we don't want to miss Jesus at Christmas time which reminds me of a story about a little boy who wanted more than anything to go to the circus. And that was about 80 years ago. And he saw one day a big poster in a store that said, the, Chris the circus is coming to town. And he was so excited, 50 cents a ticket. And he ran home and he told his dad, can I have 50 cents so I can go to the circus? And his dad said, I'll tell you what, if you get all your chores done on Saturday morning, I'll give you 50 cents so you can go to the circus. Well, of course, when Saturday came, he got up, got all of his chores done, and he got his 50 cents from his dad, and he went into town. And he was so early that he had a front row seat to the circus parade. And then the parade started. And every act that was going to be in the circus was in the parade. The trapeze artists in their sparkling clothes. There were lions in cages. There were elephants all decorated. There was a strong man. And the little boy just loved it. And then came all the clowns. And at the very end was the ringmaster. And he ran up to the ringmaster, gave him his 50 cents, and said, thank you, that was a wonderful circus. And he went home. But he missed the circus. He missed the whole event that was in the big tent down the street. The parade was just all the hoopla before the circus, before the main event. And that's what we're here tonight to remember. The main event of Christmas is the birth of Jesus Christ. Would you pray with me, please? Thank you, God, for this phenomenal Christmas season, for the joy we've had getting ready, the presents that we will give and the presents we receive. We have been greatly blessed. Help us to remember that Christmas is Jesus' birthday. Let us always make room for Jesus, because he is what Christmas is all about. Amen. Merry Christmas, everybody. Father gave the Son, and the Son gave the Spirit. The Spirit gives us life, so we can give the gift of love. And, and the, the gift goes on. And the gift goes on, and the gift goes on, and the gift goes on and on and on. Don't you love to get a present wrapped up in a Christmas bowl? God gave us a special present on that night so long ago. It's a gift that keeps on giving If our hearts can just believe It's a secret joy of living If our hearts can just receive And the gift goes on The Father gave the Son And the gift goes on The Son gave the Spirit And the gift goes on the Spirit gives us love, and the gift so goes we can give the gift of love, and the gift goes on. The Father gave the 
sun and the gift goes on. The sun gave the spirit and the gift goes on. The spirit gives us love and the gift so goes on. The story begins in the sixth month when the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and said, Greetings, favored one. The Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and his kingdom will never end. Mary said to the angel, How can this be? Ever since, we have been left to wonder, What was Mary thinking? What did Mary know? Thank you. 
in those days a decree went out from the Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. So all went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to the city of David, called Bethlehem, because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the inn. In that region, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace among those whom he favors. <laughs>
had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and, and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste, and they found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger.
When the shepherds saw this, they made known what had been told to them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all that they had heard and seen as it had been told to them. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in the city of Bethlehem, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem asking, Where is the child who has been born King of the Jews? For we observed his star at its rising and have come to pay him homage. Herod sent them to the city of Bethlehem saying, Go and search diligently for the child. And when you have found him, Bring me word, so that I may also go and pay him homage. 
When they had heard the king, they set out. And there, ahead of them, went the star that they had seen at its rising, until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw that the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. table is full of the communion elements that you picked up when you came and got your meal at the church this evening. The early church had a shared meal, and an agape love feast, in which they would receive and share in the sacrament of communion over a meal. We are doing the same thing this evening, just under a little bit of different circumstances and, and different roofs. But while we might be scattered, the elements all started here, on the Lord's table. And now filled with the Spirit, they come to you. Even if you aren't using the elements prov provided by the church, they are still infused with the Spirit of God. You don't think God can do that? God came down in human form as a baby. I certainly think that the Holy Spirit can bless the elements that you are using for communion. And that, that is at the heart of what we celebrate tonight. That God meets us where we are. Whether we are in the sanctuary or at home alone. Whether we are a shepherd in the field or a political leader from far away, wherever we are, God is willing to come. Emmanuel, God with us. Not only does God come, but God brings us together, even when we are apart. So right now, we are joined together at this table, the Lord's table, and right now, Will you join me in the invitation to the table? The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Will you please pray with me? O oh Lord, a star appeared on a silent and holy night and brought with it your presence in the form of a baby. This holy infant, tender and mild, was a sign of new life, a sign of holy vulnerability, a sign of your presence enfleshed in our human form. This would be the light that showed forth the truth that all humanity 
is beloved and called us to care for each one as beloved. During his ministry, Jesus gathered people around tables and showed them their radiance. Jesus now gathers us around this table and says, this bread and this cup are my life and light for you, and because I shine in you, let your light shine for the world. And so we ask, O oh Lord, that you would pour out your Spirit on us and on these gifts. Transform us into the light of your love for all and make us one in you. All praise be to the Creator, Redeemer, and Sustainer. Amen. And so on that night, as Jesus was sharing a meal with his disciples, he took the bread and he blessed it. Then he broke it. He said, this is my body broken for you. Take and eat. Do this in remembrance of me. body of Christ, the bread of heaven, take and eat. And then Jesus took the cup and said, this cup is a covenant. It represents a new covenant in my blood. My blood that is shed for you and for the forgiveness of your sins. Take and drink. Do this in remembrance of me. The blood of Christ, the cup of salvation. Take and drink. Please pray with me. God of grace and peace, as you have shared your life with us through the child in the manger and this meal together, let us share your life with others as the body of Christ in the world. Through Jesus, the bread of heaven, amen. And every time we eat of this bread and drink from this cup, we proclaim the saving death of our risen Lord until he comes. Now it's time to get your candles so that we can join in one of the great memories of the Christmas Eve service, lighting the candles. And it should be, because what it signifies is God's light coming into the world, a dark world, and then that light goes out from Christ from person to person until God's grace and God's love are known everywhere. As we share the light of Christ with one another, it is appropriate that we sing Silent Night together and experience how God is able to bring light to a dark, pandemic-filled world. I will now light my candle from the... Share that with you. Let us sing.
Merry Christmas to you all. I must say what a, a tremendous joy and honor it is for me to be called your pastor. This church, Westminster Church, is unbelievable. And so I hope that in the upcoming year, we will continue to show the light of Christ that we have in our hearts with the world. Now receive the benediction. May the God of glory, the word of life, and the spirit of truth bless you all, now and forever. Go and bear witness to the light of Christ. Thank you.